Hey, Jama, thanks for being on the Compete Mentality podcast today. Um, we go, Jama and I go way back. We played AU together growing up. Uh, so Jama's birthday is May 5th, mine's on May 6th. And so we always celebrated. I remember having our birthday parties together. It was normally like the AU <laughs> Indiana State Finals. We'd have cupcakes for the team or ice cream cake, whatever. And uh, so now we're getting ready to enter into our last um, year in the decade of the 20s here coming up. Oof. When we celebrate our birthdays and um it's been a while since since we've connected and so i'm super excited um because you've had an incredible journey that you've been on uh, since you graduated from mooresville high school so uh, can you just give us a little bit of your background and what you're doing today and kind of your journey up to that point yeah uh thanks for having me yeah it's it's been a minute since we we're uh you know crawling on the the hotel floors trying to hide from our parents because we were supposed to be in bed. Um, good times for sure. Um, yeah, so when I graduated, I came down to Stetson uh, University, played for four years. Um, great experience. Um, was able to obviously, you know, win a championship, go to postseason, which is a great experience for anybody, no matter what level. Yeah. Um, after that, um, I went and I did a year at University of Florida um, doing video, learned video there. Um, then I went to Texas, did video. Um, then I moved on with one of the assistants to Virginia, um, did video and kind of some scouting, some recruiting type stuff, and then moved into like an assistant spot. One of the assistants had left. So I kind of got moved into that. Um, after that year, it was, you know, a quick trip. Um, I got the call from, you know, Coach Priya, my head coach that I had played for to come back down here. Um, and I jumped on it. I mean, I love living down here. Um, you say I have a new accent. Well, it, it's from being down here so long. Um, but it's a great place to live, a great place, you know, to be in a great program, which is really big on me. And academically, it's a strong academic school. Um, I'm big on that as well. So it kind of aligned with all of, um, you know, the things that I value. Yeah, you got that Southern draw going on. We were talking about <laughs> before we hopped on here. Uh, so there's a, a local kid from the area we grew up in, I grew up in, named Luke uh, Brown, who's going to be on the men's team at Stetson. So I'm going to mm -hmm. tell Luke he needs to listen to this episode. So can you give us the best places to eat near Stetson? So me and, me and Jordan, my okay. husband, are big foodies. So we also like asking this to people who come on the podcast. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, I love food as well. I know you love food. Are you still eating your salads without dressing and everything? Uh, I'm going a little bit dressing. Would you like the Bolt House Farms? The yogurt dressing is what the dietitian says to you. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a little better. A little better. <laughs> um, so, yes. Yeah, so, Luke, I've heard all about Luke, our men's teams. They're showing me all the videos, everything. Um, it's going to be exciting for him to be down here. I would say definitely in Deland. So, Deland is big. Um, it reminds me of like a hometown Indiana feel because it's small. You know, they got the mom and pop places. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorites it's called this place called bite they have great like shrimp tacos i love you know shrimp tacos has this nice Taco little sauce that. on it yes it's great um in daytona which is like 25 30 minutes down the street there's tons of stuff obviously like cheddar's cheddar's is one of my favorite like chain restaurants mm -hmm. but um outside of that there's like deck down under where it has like crab like fresh crab legs which i love crab legs you can get you know your fishes i'm not a big fish person but um any of that and then there's one other place called like Crab Stop and they do like these boils, like seafood boils and everything. Those would be like my top three. Um, of course, there's a place uh, downtown Deland, it's called Half Wall. So for burgers, that's the place to go. They have every type of burger, like one with like an onion ring on it, one with like mac and cheese on it, everything. Yeah, so yeah. that would definitely be my top, my top places. Man, I feel like I need to hop on a plane now. They got those cheap flights to Florida and come down just to have dinner at one of those places. It sounds delicious. So what exactly. about uh, in terms of, so um, in college, I always love finding like a, a nice, good coffee shop to go like study or do quiet time or just kind of go hang out at. Uh, so is there, mm -hmm. what is like the go-to coffee shop around Stetson that has like just that laid back vibe? Yeah, so there's this place, it's called Boston Coffee House. Um, it's really, it's kind of a cool little place. It's kind of the side street of like one of the main streets downtown. And they have, I mean, they have like oatmeal and stuff you can get, but they have really good coffee. You can get all the like, of course, I'm a coffee drinker. Um, yeah. Some of, you know, a lot of our kids and stuff, they're not. They do all the sugar stuff, you know, like the lattes and frappes uh -huh. and stuff. So 
they make all of that too, but it's all in-house. So they'll have like special drinks that they, you know, create. So it's not like a, it's like a Starbucks, but it's like a mom and pop, you know, place where they're creating it all. So it's, it's cool. And they have, you know, free Wi-Fi and everything. You can just relax and do what you need to do, do some work. There are people in there that go and do school work and everything. So it's, it's a pretty cool place. Yeah. So if James, so James Sharp's going to the Boston coffee house, what's your order? Just black coffee, black, black coffee. coffee. Yep, black coffee. Sometimes I'll get, you know, some some cream in it, add a little cream. Mm -hmm. But um usually I just stick to coffee. For, yep. Solid. I, I love it. Yeah, yeah, I try not, I try not, you know, I'm getting older, so I can't have all the, you know, carbs and everything I used to do. So I try to stay away from a lot of the sugar. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, if we go from like the, the dark looking coffee to one that actually looks like uh we just poured like a bunch of vanilla creamer in there, just go straight to our hips now. And yeah how exactly many, how many exactly. old ladies are like people having gin pop clients that come and they're like hey i want to get rid of this underneath my arm so i go i think the coffee might go straight there too for us yeah so for sure for sure you know it catches up to us a lot quicker than it used to before we we're doing what a couple workouts a day that stuff would fly right off now yeah not not so much at least not for me <laughs> <laughs> that is right so uh can you tell us about your recruiting process so back to high school, what was your recruiting process like? It was pretty crazy. I mean, I kind of came from a place where um, none of my family had ever been, you know, in the recruiting process. Like my parents, no, definitely not. <laughs> if they're listening to this, I'm sorry, but no, they were not. Uh, they, uh, my sister didn't, no, like my brothers, you know, they were younger. So nobody had really knew kind of what the process was um, or kind of how to act or kind of navigate through it. So it was a little different. I mean, I talked to a lot of schools. I visited a lot of schools just because I was kind of unaware and I kind of wanted to know, you know, where I'd be because I really haven't been on a, away from home, you know? Yep. Um, so it was crazy because, so Gary Donna, RIP, yeah. he passed away, but he actually was the first one to bring up Stetson to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you know, I never heard of it. I mean, a lot of people who don't really know someone who goes here, uh, they never have heard of Stetson. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, all right, kind of put it on the back burner. And he's like, you know, you'd be a great fit. The coach is great. You know, she's trying to build something, you know, everything like that. So I'm like, okay, nothing, nothing really. So she had actually reached out to me and I was like, okay, I'll start, you know, researching and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of all clicked. So she is, you know, part of a huge Italian family, which as you know, like family is huge to me. I mean, my family, you know, I'm always around my family all the time. So that was like huge. Like the team was, you know, you kind of just get that feeling and that fit. Um, so that's kind of how I got down here. I mean, how I even knew about Stetson, it just kind of all kind of fell into place. Um, luckily, I know, you know, you visit some places up there, you know, maybe I want to stay around home, maybe I don't, but it was just kind of like, you know, God is like leading you in a different path. Like you, you need to kind of get away and, you know, make your own path and kind of grow up, which was good for me, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of it. I mean, my grandma, we, we laugh about it now. My grandparents, I mean, they're very involved in everything. Mm -hmm. They were like, no, my grandma was like, it's too far. No, you're not, you don't I need to go. Like, yeah, she, she was not happy, but then um, she came down here. So they came down here the first winter. They, you know, drove their camper down here, stayed for a couple of months, come to the games. They're like, oh, we love it. They've been back every winter since. Like, wow. even when I went here, they wanted to come come here. They just left. They were here for two months um, staying with me. Like, they love it. Like, if they could get a place down here, they would. Um, so I keep telling them. So maybe they'll eventually do that. Um, but it was a great decision, not just for me, but my family loved it too. Um, and just moving forward into my career, really, you know, really helped with that as well yeah come full circle now you're setting in yes <laughs> like you're insisting at Stetson so that's cool just the uh, you know stepping out I know how close your family is but to go you know yeah. to Florida to school how you, you know you probably had a lot of some fears built up but you took a step of faith and uh you're reaping blessings from taking that step of faith still today so that's really that's awesome so you yeah. were talking about how you didn't your parents um didn't didn't go through a recruiting process. So you didn't really have anybody guiding you except for the man in the jumpsuit who said, Hey, Stetson and told you um, about Stetson. So what advice would you give to, 
you know, kids and even parents who are listening and maybe who haven't been like, what should uh, recruits be looking at when they're going through that, the process and what advice would you give? Yeah, definitely. Um, I will say it's definitely this year has been way different than any other year and moving forward just because kids get a year back now, um, the transfer portal, I'm pretty sure that the one year, you know, transfer rule is going to go through. Um, so people are going to be immediately eligible to play. So I think it's even harder, especially for freshmen coming out of high school. Like you really have to do your research for me. Like that's first and foremost, like who do they have on their roster? Like coaches can kind of tell you, I mean, everybody's going to be kind of nice to you in this. Like they want you, like they're trying to sell you something. So one who's already on their roster, who are they bringing back? Like who's in front of you? Um, One, you, you shouldn't be scared of that, but if they have two and three people in front of you, like, okay, the odds of you, especially if you're like, Oh, I have to play my freshman year. I have to start like, okay, well, the real reality of that, if they already have a couple people on there who probably are maybe their main players from last year, that's probably not going to happen. Now, I think some of that is good. It, it could get you better. Like competition makes you better. So you shouldn't be scared of it either, but it should be something you're aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely. I mean, obviously right now people can't visit places, but if it's somewhere like you're not accustomed to, or you really haven't been, you should probably visit or at least, you know, let them show you the area, you know, kind of even Google the area to see what kind, like, is it a city? Do you want to be in a city? Is it, you know, a small town? Um, Why I like Stetson is because it's a small town. I mean, I'm from small town, Indiana. It, it, it gave me a sense of home and normality where um, other places like a city and stuff, you know, when I moved to Austin, it was a huge city. I was like, this is so new to me. Like it's, it was a cool and different experience, but I had never been around that. So if that's something like if you're like oh city is fine like you should kind of know the area or what uh where the school is um and definitely um kind of see like just the coaching style the big the big thing i get and i it baffles me is kids will like you know kids will transfer and like oh why are you trying well i didn't like their style of play i'm like well that's kind of why you want to do your homework beforehand like coaches don't really you know change their style of play most of the time if they do something like we are Princeton style here we are coach has been doing it for years um, we did change um, from so when I first got here they were more kind of she did some ball screen stuff but then into my junior year she changed it and I love the system I mean it's just shared offense kind of like you know what the Stanford's the you know you see Notre Dame playing that type of style so coaches don't really change you know what they do so you should kind of know hey I want to play in an up tempo you can watch one of their games and say oh yeah they're up tempo you can go to a practice yeah they're up tempo um I would definitely you know kind of see that and see like yeah that's something I want to do or like if you see if you're a big and you see their bigs are only picking and rolling well and you want to do a little more um then you should probably be aware of that before you, you know, agree to go somewhere or um, like, Hey, yeah, this is, this is a fit for me, you know? So yeah. it's not all about the checks and the lights and the, you know, it, it's crazy. So. Yeah. I think so many uh, kids get caught up in the name on the front of the Jersey and uh, the recruiting process. And if they start getting recruited by this big time school, like they lock in, but they're not taking into all the consideration okay. the things you just talked about. This it, is that the style of play. Uh, I remember somebody saying to me, when you're going through the process, if you got hurt, is that still a, a school that you would want to continue being at to, you know, get your education? Like you talked about, is that an area that you would want to live in and that you feel like you could, you could really thrive in that area. And so there's yeah. so many different factors that people just don't think about. They focus on, ego gets in the way and they want the the name on the jersey and they're not thinking about what's best uh really for you and what your skill set had and what your what your goals are ultimately just not only as a basketball player but as a person so that was that was very good advice i know we have lots of uh aspiring players who are getting recruited are going to be listening to this and hopefully you guys are taking notes so um so even 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 deeper than that sorry like if you like 
everybody says when they when you're recruiting the first thing you ask like what are you looking for Mm -hmm. everybody says you know a family environment relationships and you know that's good you should have that but every coach is selling that too Mm -hmm. so what you can also look like to kind of maybe weed out some of that do their former players come back like do they still keep in contact with them? Like, are they still cool with them? Because if not, you can say, okay, their, their experience wasn't, you know, great. Like, you know, not, not everyone's going to have the same experience any place they go, but it's something to be said if, um, you know, they have their alumni still come back, you still support them. You know what I mean? That means it, it was a great, they come down and visit or go drive across, you know, it, it just speaks to say that they had a good time. It's a good experience. Um, and you know, the culture is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you were an all conference point guard at Stetson. Um, they played point mm-hmm. guard and as point guards, you have to be very good observer. So you got to see the whole, whole floor. And so in the recruiting process, you got to be a, just be a good observer of, yeah. So anybody can tell you what you want to hear, but like you're saying, okay. observe, like are people, are alumni coming back? It, how are the, what is the um, body language of the players during practice or even just like if a right. player out on the sideline, what's their body language? Because you can tell a lot about a culture uh, by just watching how right. they interact um, as a team during a practice or even a game. So AAU season is upon us, and we have so many good memories, you and I do, um, of wearing, you know, we had the headbands, and we were all decked out. Uh, but we, I mean, I can remember AAU going all over, national, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, Kansas, and we were always, I mean, right there yes. like the final four and playing against the top talent in the country. And, I mean, that just prepared us so well yes. um, for our high school careers and our college careers. And so with eight AAU season upon us, and – um, so my question is, do you, do you feel now, so you're in a, a coaching role at a college that every player needs to be playing AU, or has it came to a point where AU has kind of become this monster and there's a certain situation where a kid, it might be better if you just focus on training for a summer, because if you're good enough, we're going to know that you're good enough and we're going to be able to seek to seek you out. So what would you what would you say uh, to that question? I don't know if that was a question. It was more like yeah, that. That's a good question. It, it was. It was kind of deep. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. Question. Yeah. Well, I I will say it has definitely became a monster. Um, mm-hmm. We didn't have EYBL and all this Nike sponsored, and mm-hmm. you're playing for the team, and you're getting all this gear and all that. Like we just played for the love of the game. Like honestly, I think we had like some. Uh, remember um, our Michael T. White shoes? Do we have Michael T. White shoes? Remember those? I don't know. Yeah, we had, yeah we had some Michael. Yeah, we our one time our one time sponsorship. Um, yeah, Shout out Michael T. White, wherever you are. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Um, hilarious. Um, so yeah, I mean, it definitely has become that, but I will say there's something about, I, I mean, kids need to get in the gym trained. That's, uh, but there's something about being in real game situations, um, that you don't always get just training. Mm -hmm. Um, I never, like, I don't think you have to be on a big team. Like, you know, you're going to get noticed whether on your big team or a small team, if you're good enough, yeah. um, that doesn't matter. And I've always thought that, and that's, that's anywhere, that's college, that's any level, high school, that's any level. Yeah. But um, I think there's just something about uh, being able to be in that environment, being in in-game situations, playing against competition um, that you not necessarily would get um, in high school, mm-hmm. um, which can grow your game and can, you know, kind of, it can ex- you know, expose some stuff that, Hey, maybe I need to work on that because, you know, that girl took that away from me or, you know, I couldn't defend her. So maybe I need to work on, you know, my quickness or, def- you know, defense a little more. So I was, I, I think, I don't think it's a 100%. If you don't play, you're not going to get a scholarship. I will say that. Um, but I think it can only benefit you if you're playing, um, AAU, even if it's not the big tournaments, even if it's just, you know, some, other competitions um around your state or you know around where you live um even that's going to be better than just doing just straight training one-on-one I think absolutely yes we we preach at CTA that um you have to learn basketball is all about decision making so 
we're going to teach you a skill. Mm -hmm. So we're going to deform down, then we're going to have you go game speed. But then we're the biggest thing is you have to go live with it. And so like in a, whether that's a, you or even in training session, like if, if you're going somewhere and, and you're not getting live play, if you're going playing for AU team, you're sitting on the bench, like you need to be playing somewhere, go find somewhere to play. If you're going to a skills training session, you're not getting any live reactionary stuff. Like you need to reevaluate what is the trainer just collecting a check from you or they actually like have your best interest at heart. So, um, so when you are going out to yeah. these AU tournaments for all the, the AUers who are listening as a coach, what are, what's kind of your guys at Stetson? What are you guys looking for in your recruits? Like, do you guys have kind of like five things that you're going through? Like they got to be, have a good motor or whatever your guys' kind of philosophy is on recruiting. Yeah, um, so obviously we recruit, uh, we want to recruit the best kids we can. I mean, that's anywhere. Mm -hmm. But um, because of our one, like once we initiate, we're like, oh, we like this kid. We have to make sure they're a fit academically. That's mm -hmm. that's a big piece for us because we are a high academic school. Mm -hmm. But in just watching them, um, definitely a motor. Um, we like to get up and down. So we don't want anybody um, that can't get up and down or that it will be hard to get in shape and uh, stay in shape. Um, we definitely look at attitude. Um, and I'm not just saying like people clapping people's face. I mean, there's, there's some, we like some competitive fire. We like dogs. Like there's nothing wrong with that. It's like the outside stuff. You know, can you, can you be coached? Like, can your coach say something to them? You don't respond. Like, you know, are you always looking in the stands for an answer? You know, um, yeah. stuff like that. Um, I will say versatility is a big one. Um, because of our offense, we have to have versatile type players. Um, we don't necessarily just look for, you know, you know, six two post kid that just has their back to the basket. Like we want someone who can step out a little bit. Um, they have to at least be able to make a 15 foot shot. Now coach likes all five players to be able to step out and shoot the three. Like, obviously that's the dream. Um, mm -hmm. But those don't always, those, you know, post kids that can shoot the three aren't, you know, always, those are kind of diamond dozen these days, of course. Um, so we, those are the main things I would say. Um, definitely it, it, it varies by position wise, um, what coach is looking for. Um, obviously a PG, you got to have an IQ that, you know, you run the show. Um, coach is really big about, you know, the point guards. Um, so you got to have an IQ where you can, you know, you can learn the game and then you're the extension of her. So you got to be able to get, you know, your teammates where you need to be. Um, and communication is is big as well um, in that realm. So I would say those are the main things. If you're a guard and you can't shoot the three, you're probably not gonna you're probably not gonna be high on our list. Um, that's just reality of you know of how we play and our style. So um, so yeah. So you talked about point guards and IQ and running the show. What are a few skill sets that? Uh, to high school or a junior high point guard that's listening to this that they need to be working on uh, if they want to play in college? Um, you know, definitely, I mean, handles is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our kids um, right now, even we're working on handles. Like they don't have tight handles. They, you know, when they get against pressure, they turn it over. Um, so just putting them in those pressure situation, be able to um, get out of them or pass out of them, um, which leads me to my passing. I think passing is a lost art. Um, I think a lot of kids are terrible passers. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to be able to facilitate. Um, I mean, a lot of kids on their high school teams, they might be scoring 40, 50 points, but because they can't pass the ball to any of their teammates, so they don't have to. Um, but we like passing is a huge, you know, benefit if you are able to do that, you know, if you can hit your post player with a good pass, you know, hit your, you know, give someone the open shot with a good pass, that that's definitely a, a big key. Um, those two and then communication, I think is something that not everyone and I will say I was one of them. Um, I'm not, you know, I was not a great communicator when I first came in. Um, I think it's something that is you can learn. But I definitely, if you already have that skill and you're always, you're already, you know, communicating, repeating calls, if you can already do that and get your, you know, teammate, you're already ahead of the game. And that's something that then you can take and, 
you have time to learn something else because we're not, you know, saying, hey, repeat the call. Hey, you know, we. so I think communication is a big one. And it's hard for some people. Not everyone is a great communicator. And some people are quiet. And, you know, you hear these things lead by example and stuff. But I think in a point guard, it you have to be able to be vocal, be a vocal leader, um, especially here. So. Absolutely. You just nailed. I mean, you nailed that answer. Uh, so. I remember in college, Coach V always used to say, passers make shooters, passers make shooters. And about, and at CTA, when we're um, in our training sessions, we call it the one second advantage. So when you're making a solid pass, if you make a terrible pass, well, it's going to take an extra second for them to get it back into their pocket, and the defense is going to be there. So as a point guard, mm -hmm. you got to set up your, your right. play. So giving them a great pass or positioning the ball to the post play where they need it at is the one second advantage to getting your your teammate in a position where they can score. And that even goes like if we call one second advantage of setting a correct screen. So if you set a correct screen, if you set a wrong screen, the defense is going to be able to, to get through or like just stay with the um, offensive player. You set a solid screen, it's, that, it's going to take that defender had to fight over it and it's giving your player an one second advantage to make a decision whether they're going to pull up or pass. So. Um, so yeah, it's a one second advantage, what we just call it at CTA. And then another thing, uh, so it's communication and yeah. saying like, you and I were both like on the AU, like when outside, like we like to have fun, but like in the game, we're like, just lead by example. And like, we're kind of on the shire end, I would guess, kind of both of us. <laughs> so, uh, the journey, I mean, into college, you get thrown in the point guard role, yeah. you better not be shy because you have juniors and seniors who are expecting right. you to make the play call and you're pretty much the quarterback of the team. So back to our AAU thing. So like if you're right. in AAU season, you need to work on a skill set. Like one thing that you could work on to all point guards listening, work on communicating. So like just make it a natural habit that you just are talking. Mm -hmm. And if it's not natural for you, like start working on it because that's where you're going to have to, you just got to do it and get over. You kind of got to be okay with, People think like they're, they don't want to say the wrong thing, but like you, by not saying anything, you're more of an idiot than saying, saying stuff. So, all right. Right. And it, even if you're just repeating, yeah, even yes. if you're just repeating what your coach is saying, like, yes. that's just another voice that, Hey, someone maybe didn't hear it or just uh, remind, you know, remind someone who, Hey, it takes them a couple of times. Like it's as easy as that. So. Yeah. You got to cheat sheet in your coach. So you just got to listen to what they're saying, like you're saying. <laughs> All right, so if you were, I know that you are a, a country music fan, as are Jordan and I. So um, if you were to write a letter to yourself, which we know is a, is a nice uh, country song as well. Um, and so you're writing a letter to yourself when you were in like middle school or high school, what would you say to yourself? Mm-hmm. Right, I middle school um, high school pajama. That's a good one. <laughs> being, on, being on this side, um, tell yourself. What would I say to my? Yeah, what would I say to myself? Um, I think even um. I don't know. That's a good one. Probably just I would probably tell myself. I don't know. Keep working. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times, like you were saying earlier, we put so much pressure in um, a big name or, you know, a place, um, you know, where we should be, you know, kind of trying to measure ourselves up with everyone else mm -hmm. when we all have our own niche. Like we're all, you know, we all have our own purpose and we all have our own place that we're supposed to be at and um, are the right level, even basketball wise, even outside of basketball wise, like, mm -hmm you know, it kind of all works out for, you know, a greater reason, a greater purpose and, you know, just be patient and um, don't stress over, you know, someone else get, doing this or going this place or, you know, just kind of, and that's even now looking back, like, just be yourself. Um, things will, you know, work out for you, especially if you put in the work, mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll get to where you want to get to. Um, it may not be, you know, bright, shiny, you know, big name, you know, it might not be a Yukon or, but it, you know, you'll be successful if you pick the right place that fits for you. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's would be my biggest advice to myself. Um, yeah, because, you know, we all, we all, we all, you know, grow up thinking we're, we're, we're going to the, the big names, but really, um, 
it's about what makes you happy and what you know what's going to work out best for you yourself you could be singing this letter on the grand old opry stage all right next one so if you could write a letter to yourself <laughs> <laughs> if you could write a letter to yourself when you were in college so it steps in and now you're on the other side of your assistant coach there what would you say what, what would you say to yourself in a letter to 18 to 22 year old jama Oh, I would say, um, I would say, um, like, don't, th don't take everything like so personally, like to heart. I mean, there comes the time where, you know, on the court business is business. It's nothing against character. It's nothing against someone thinks you're a bad, you know, um, I'm a very emotional player. And with that, I mean, I, I'm always trying to win, you know, I'm, you know, I'm out there, I'm talking, especially now, um, you know, I still get out there and talk a little trash to, you know, our kids now, but um, I'm very passionate about basketball. Um, so I think sometimes, you know, especially coming in freshman and stuff when, you know, someone get on me or something doing wrong, like I took that personally, like against, you know, man, I'm not a good player, or, you know, I gotta, you know, I would just say, just take it, um, take it and be like, okay, I just need to do this better. Um, instead of, you know, maybe holding that too close to my heart. Um, it's just, you know, people trying to get, get you better and make you better. Um, that's really what it is. Good. La last uh, question of asking about writing a letter to yourself. So one of the hardest transitions, <laughs> I think, is right after you graduate from college. And if you don't go on to play pro ball and you're kind of like in this time where you've been a basketball player for 20 something years it's been part of your life to okay what's next mm -hmm. and it's you go through like this identity thing like because as a competitor you want to be competing yes. so if you could write a letter we're, we're getting ready to have our birthdays here in about less than a month we're going to be entering <laughs> the last year of our 20s so both of us are going to be 29 so if you could write a letter to yourself when you were like <laughs> 20 you know 22 23 24 like coming out of college what would you say to to Jama at that stage of yeah. life? Um, I would say um, probably, you know, be patient. I think once again, um, you know, I, I had the opportunity to go overseas and I chose not to. Um, I even might tell myself to take that chance. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an opportunity you don't always get back, um, for sure. Once you start getting into the business and stuff, it's a grind. Um, so, you know, maybe do that, maybe not. I don't always regret that. Um, it was, a, it was a good choice for me at that time. Um, so I think patience, um, for sure, like it's going to work out. Um, you're going to get it, you know, and kind of enjoy the journey, um, of how it is. I mean, I'm still on it. I'm still new to this business. Um, I'm still learning and growing, um, so just continue to, to grind, um, but enjoy it along the way too. Um, I think sometimes we miss out opportunities because we're so focused on getting to a certain place or a certain standpoint or um, any type of that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what I would say probably, um, I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm helping you write your, we're starting to write your future book. So we got a couple of the chapters already laid out for you. <laughs> so, Exactly. Uh, yes. Yes. A book. A book would be way better because nobody wants me singing. Expect not even on a karaoke stage. So. <laughs> you and you and I both. My first B was in choir in the seventh grade. Who gives a seventh grader a B in choir? It should be like participation. <laughs> Get everything right. I just couldn't <laughs> sing. <laughs> so last uh, last question here. Oh, hilarious. Um, so you've talked a little bit about purpose, about uh, faith. So what has God been teaching you here lately? Is there any, anything you've been studying or any books you would encourage us that you've maybe been reading? So I'll just let you take the floor, but what's God been teaching you lately? Um, I would say definitely perseverance. Um, I do a daily devotional. I probably should do more, I, I'm more reading and stuff. Um, I just do, you know, my daily, um, my mom gets me one every year for Christmas. And this one's kind of unique because it has one for the morning and one for the evening. Mm -hmm. So I, I really like that. Um, usually before just, you know, like a morning. So um, 
so it, it's pretty cool um just gives you that little sense of before I start work you know kind of like a a calming sense um and then kind of a you know debrief when I get home um after a long day so I will definitely say perseverance um I think a lot has happened this past almost two years um a lot of changes even in my career and um and just as a team in general with all the COVID stuff, there's been a lot and it's it's been taxing this season, not just on me, on the team. And you can see it um, just to kind of be that energy for the team. Um, like, hey, we just got shut down. Um, at the beginning of the season, we actually, um, we were getting ready to get on the bus to go to a game. And we had already been shut down two or three times. And then our AD calls and was like, hey, one of your members tested positive, y'all have to go back into quarantine. Um, and at that time, the quarantine time was 14 days. Mm -hmm. So you're taking kids, you're trying to, you know, give them a great experience, keep them in shape. And then you're telling them, you know, every couple of weeks, hey, you got to be basically back in your room for 14 days. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a lot, um, a lot. Um, we didn't start off the season great. We, we finished we finished a lot better, but just getting through that time is like, dang, we're going through all this just to be shut down again. Um, you know, we've had, we had kids opt out. We had kids, you know, you know, choose not to play this season. And um, it, it was just a lot, you know, that, that happened. Um, even as coaches, I know players, you know, they all went through it. Um, and, you know, we're still seeing some re repercussions of that, but it has, um, it has gone better. So definitely perseverance. I mean, just trying to get through everything, navigate, you know, a different type of world, um, you know, different dynamics professionally and personally. Um, that, that's a huge thing. At CTA, uh, one thing that we talked to a lot to our players, to coaches, to clients about is just setting, having good habits and routines um, and so especially you're talking about this year that mm -hmm. last two years and I mean hats off to you as a coach like this has been like one of the toughest periods to coach in and uh, so you're pouring okay. into your players and you're also you know trying to work on your self-care because everything you like you're navigating it all so what were some things that uh, over these last yeah. two years that kind of you have put in place personally um, or maybe continued it on from years of, in the past but for your self-care like what are some habits or routines that like you do I have to do this every day in order to to fill myself up so that I can give that energy to our players it could be just getting a cup of black coffee yeah um I think <laughs> yeah for sure the coffee for sure the coffee especially those early days because I am not a morning person by any means um but definitely um the devotion has helped I think sometimes um especially early on, um, I would just take everything and take it, take it, take it. And sometimes you just need those moments of, um, you know, just a, a stop, a pause, mm -hmm. you know, just like, okay. Um, you know, even if it's just a prayer, um, it all helps because this business is, you know, 24 seven. Um, I was telling somebody there, uh, none of us get paid by the hour here. So, um, we, we put in way more hours, and that's just what the business is. Mm -hmm. So I think just getting, taking breaks, um, that's been a huge thing. Like um, just stop, pause for a minute. Okay, I'm good. Like I'm relaxed, I'm good. All right, let's start something else now. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's been huge. Um, definitely trying to um, take a little time away um, before it was like one thing to the next thing to the next thing. Um, so you would go from, obviously, you know, um, you know, the season, then you're into postseason workouts, then you're right into recruiting, you're on the road. So it's just taking a short break, stepping away, and then coming back with like a refreshed mindset. I think um, that's very beneficial for anybody. Um, I think our head coach could do it a little more. She, um, she's definitely always, always working. And I think, um, you know, lately, even, you know, even as head coaches, you know, in seeing in different programs and stuff, they'll, you know, take a couple of days away, which is good. And then they'll come back. All right, we're ready to go. Even if it's just one or two days. Um, I think it definitely helps, you know, with that, just, you know, kind of getting, getting energy and be like, okay, refresh mindset, let's go. Um, so I would say that, um, is the main things, um, for sure. That's so encouraging. And I think different, there's different places that are refreshing, 
uh, different people, just like we talk about the recruiting process. There's different schools that are going to be a good fit for you. So what is the good fit for you when it comes to, like, if I can, if I go, I'm going to have a refreshing getaway, this is what I would enjoy going and doing. Um, well, I love the beach. So I, you know, I'm right down the street from the beach. So I'm a little, I'm a little spoiled. Yes. Um, so definitely when I want to take a refreshing day, I just drive over there. Um, so Daytona, you can actually drive on the beach. So I just drive, you know, right on, just, you know, relax. It's, it, there's something calming about honestly, just watching the waves. I know it sounds tacky, mm-hmm. but it is, it's, it, it's just calming and relaxing. I mean, that's what I do for sure. Um, I mean, anytime I get free time, I usually um, go up and see my family, mm-hmm. um, see my nephews. Um, so I'm not missing out on, you know, all of them growing up and I get to see, you know, and they don't just see me through a phone FaceTime all the time, um, which which is helpful, but it's still not the real thing. So um, those are like the two main things I like to do um, for sure. Well, Jama, you are a, a very... You got your priorities in line, and I know that for sure that you are on, I mean, just on this journey that you're going to be, to, if it's your desire of being a head coach and leading a program um, someday, like I can just see it. I get, I just knowing you and, and seeing where you're at now, like, so it's, it, it fires me up. Like I'm ready to, to send players to come play for you. So, so th- thanks hey, for, uh, we'll say, hey, I'll take them. <laughs> I, especially the ones who sh- can shoot three. So, Whenever we got players exactly. going to the that can shoot it, I'm going to be hitting you up and telling you to get, get on them. So uh, thanks for being on the podcast today, though. It was great uh, catching up. I, I don't know. It's been – I was trying to think in my head. Maybe like 15 – I don't know how long. It's been a long time uh, since we've just been able to, just to, to connect um, and actually talk and not just like pass each other a tournament and say, hey. So uh, this was good. Exactly. Uh, very, very good, and look forward to having you on sometime in the future to talk about other topics. And um, yeah, just have a happy birthday here in, in a little under a month. So happy birthday to you last yes. last year in the 20s. I know, crazy. Well, thank you for having me. Um, it, it was it was a pleasure. Um, this is really cool what you're doing, um, especially like in Indiana. I love, you know, seeing kids, you know, get better. And I I think you and your husband have the right, you know, the right ideas, not just showing them what they can do on the court, but off the court. That's really huge. Um, I also think it would be fun to do one with me, you and Mel, um, all of our stories from back in the day. Um, (laughs) We could go on and on about that. Yeah. (laughs) Melody Doss, if you're listening, it's not Doss, she's married now, but if you're listening to this, we're going to you on and we're going to do a a throwback. So it's going to happen. We're going to get it done. Cool. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again, Jamie. And ha- have a great rest of your day. You're probably going to go to the beach and go eat some seafood. So pretty <laughs> jealous, but have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank yep. you. Um,